Hello. This is the Thanksgiving devotion for 2020. Even though Thanksgiving isn't strictly a Christian holiday, Christians recognize that even this year, we have a lot to give thanks to God for. So it's, a, it's, it's good, it's proper for us to take some time to look into God's word, to have him speak to us through it so we can focus on all the blessings that he's showered on us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Words from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is good. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. We confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in you. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest each day in this peace, rising and sleeping, so that we can serve him every single day in this new life he's given us. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for having created us and continually blessing us from generation to generation. Thank you for being with us in all our joys and sorrows, for your comfort in our sadness, your companionship in our loneliness. Most of all, receive our utmost thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Give us the strength to live this and every day conscious of all that he has given us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson for today is from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 28. Then Paul stood up in front of the council of the Areopagus, and he said, Men of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking around and carefully observing your objects of worship, I even found an altar on which had been inscribed to an unknown god. Now what you worship as unknown, this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The Lord God, who made the world and everything in it, is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples made with hands. Neither is he served by human hands, as if he needed anything, since he himself gives all people life and breath and everything they have. From one man he made an entire nation of mankind to live over the entire face of the earth. He determined the appointed times and the boundaries where they would live. He did this so they would seek God and perhaps reach out to him, reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, indeed we are also his offspring. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson for today is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. We read these select verses. Be very careful so that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and ordinances and his statutes, 
that I am commanding you today. You might say in your heart, my ability and the power of my hand have earned this wealth for me. But then you are to remember that the Lord your God is the one who gives you the ability to produce wealth, to confirm his covenant that he promised to your fathers with an oath, as he does to this day. This is the word of our God. So this is the last service of the year, of the church year. So what better time to come to God's word once more for thanksgiving, to recognize the Lord's bountiful goodness over this past year, especially since our sinful flesh looks at what has transpired and is so thankless and ungrateful and would gladly enjoy all of God's benefits without stopping even for a moment to recognize their giver. Of all the things that we can give thanks for, we should give thanks for, first of all, the ability and the opportunity to give thanks. Is the idea for Thanksgiving challenging for you this year? If it is, I suggest it's because we're failing to recognize that all things come from God. If we struggle with grasping the concept of of being thankful for what we have, it's probably because we're forgetting the one to be thankful to, or we actually think that we deserve good things, all of good things, or the things that we deserve, that we deserve the things we want. If you're having trouble giving thanks this year, let's do a quick review of who God is. To thank God, we first have to know who he is, right? Listen to how King David began, began his psalm of thanksgiving as he brought the Ark of the Covenant into the tabernacle, newly brought to Jerusalem. This is Psalm 105. David wrote, Give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his name, make his deeds known among the peoples, sing to him, make music to him, meditate on all his wonders. How can you give thanks to the Lord? Jehovah, Yahweh, the great I am. How can you give thanks if you don't know his name? How can you make known his deeds among the peoples if you don't know his deeds? How can you talk of all of his wondrous works if you don't know what they are? And after you know all of that, then you have to know how you, a poor, miserable sinner, could possibly hope to approach him, how you can call upon him, how you can worship him at all. David continued in this psalm saying, Take pride in his holy name. Take the heart of those who seek, let the heart of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. How do you seek the Lord who who is invisible? Where do you go? On what basis will he receive you or listen to you or accept you? Well, David gives the answer. Starting at verse 8, he remembers his covenant forever, the word he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. Sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. See, out of all the nations of the earth, Israel had the right to approach God and the knowledge of how to approach him, not because they were special in and of themselves, but because God had made a covenant a promise to them to be their God, to hear their prayers, to help them, to forgive them, to save them. That first covenant pointed ahead to Christ, who was the true heir of the first covenant and the author of the New Testament, the new covenant with his own blood. The Apostle Paul in the first chapter of Colossians described how we, have been given this ability to give thanks to God. Paul wrote, giving thanks to the Father who qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. The Father rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his Son he loves, in whom we now have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. At one time you were alienated from God and hostile in your thinking as expressed through your evil deeds, but now... Christ reconciled you in his body of flesh through death in order to present you holy, blameless, and faultless before him. Did you catch that? You, dear saints, yet still sinners, you do know God. 
because you know and believe what's written about him in Holy Scripture. And you do know how you can approach him because he has given his son and he has given you faith in his only son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And through him, you and I have access to God so that he hears our prayers, so that he accepts our thanksgiving. You know better than to approach God by yourself on your own merit, by, by clinging to your own works, which is clinging to your, your sins. You know you have no access to God except by that one route, by one way, through Jesus Christ who died for you, who rose again and now stands at the right hand of God to intercede for you at all times. You can give thanks to God because you've been reconciled to God by the death of Christ as the cause and through faith in Christ as the means. So give thanks to the Lord for that above all, for your place in his family as his dearly loved children who have been reconciled to him through faith in Christ Jesus and by the blood he shed. And then, just as David recounted many of the blessings God had given to his reconciled people of Israel, it's fitting for us, for those who have been reconciled through Christ by faith, to recount some of his blessings. And I say some because every moment, every breath, every molecule, every opportunity that we have to give thanks comes from God. Give thanks to the Lord for the heavens and the earth, for good weather, for bad weather, for the harvest that feeds all the creatures of the world, that super abundantly fill the shelves in our grocery stores and in our pantries. Give thanks to God for wood and stone, for metal and plastic, for cement and asphalt, for all the things God uses in each and every single day of our lives by all the people that he's put in our lives and all the skills that he's given to all those lives. For all those people that put them together to build everything we have, our houses, our cars, our stores, our roads. God takes care of us every single day through the people around us and he takes care of other people through us. So give thanks to the Lord for your, your fellow man for those who provide useful services to our society, for, for kind neighbors who make our lives pleasant, for difficult neighbors who help us appreciate how patient God has been with us. We give thanks to the Lord for, for your family, for daily opportunities to show them love. Give thanks for faithful friends. Give thanks to the Lord for your body with, with all its problems and wrinkles and weaknesses. Give thanks for the promise of the resurrection of that same body when all of these weaknesses are going to be turned into strength. Give thanks to the Lord for the ministry, for the word and sacrament, for your baptism, for Christ's body and blood offered in our church services. Give thanks for our synod, for the solid confession of Christian faith, for, for all its pastors, for all the churches. Give thanks, as I do, for each and every member at Emmanuel Redeemer. Give thanks for our beautiful church building. And this year we can give, we have an extra reason why we can give thanks. The Lord has provided our daily bread to such a degree that this year we were able to pay off all of our debt. Emmanuel Redeemer is debt free for the first time in a long time. And of course, it's a bittersweet blessing because we had to say goodbye to the trimmers. But even in that, we can give thanks that God provided and is still providing for the trimmers. The large chunk of the money we used to pay off the debt came from the sale of the duplex, but, but not all of it. You, the faithful members of Emmanuel Redeemer, have been giving your regular offerings all year, even through this uncertainty of the pandemic and these times. Friends, in summary, give thanks to the Lord for his promise to provide everything, your daily bread, for faithfully providing it year after year after year. And as we close out this, this, new, uh, this, um, this one more church year, it's right and proper that we, the ones who by God's love have been reconciled to God through Christ, that, that we, the ones who have received such great blessings from God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we should look at all that God has given us above and, and well beyond what we deserve. And we give thanks for it. Not just today, but, but every single day. And so we do. Amen. We pray. 
We praise and thank you, gracious Lord, for your indescribable gift, our Savior Jesus Christ, who has redeemed us from sin, death, and the power of the devil, that we might be your own and live in your kingdom forever. We praise and thank you, gracious Lord, for the gift of your word and sacraments through which you give us faith in your Son and the desire to serve you in all we say and do. We praise and thank you, gracious Lord, for the gift of life and health and the abundance of our earthly blessings. We praise and thank you, gracious Lord, for the comfort you give us when our hearts are heavy and troubles overwhelm us. We praise and thank you, gracious Lord, for the victory you have given to our friends and loved ones who have died and now live with you in glory. We praise and thank you, gracious Lord, for growing your kingdom and leading many more to know and love you. For all your gifts, gracious Lord, for your blessings to body and soul that are new to us every morning, we praise and thank you now and always. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>